Hey everyone, so this is just a recording of the notes just to help you understand hopefully the different um, concepts between the higher levels of organization, which is pretty much just building off of what we did before where we went atoms to molecules to cells and all the way up through the different organs and organ systems. Okay, so this one is just kind of taking the next level with that. So first, just what a species is. So a species is a group of similar organis organisms that can breed and reproduce fertile offspring. So of course, lions can reproduce to get other lions, and so they'd be considered the same species. If they don't naturally do that in nature, then they're not considered the same species, okay? So it is possible to cross some of these different cats, but they live in different regions of the world, and so they don't normally do that because they're not really in contact with another. So they are considered different species, like the lion and the tiger, okay? Same is true with birds that you see over here, and so that's why they look different. So some of these obviously cannot interbreed, whereas others, like some of these cats, can. Okay, but again, it's not just whether they can, but whether or not they would normally do that based off of where they live on the planet. Okay, so an organism is just an individual living thing. So we have, of course, two organisms, two different rabbits here. Okay, but the rabbits, of course, are the same species. Okay, so every single one of these is a different species that you see here, but it's also showing one organism from each one of these species. A niche is the role a species plays in the ecosystem. Okay, so fl flamingos over here, for example, they feed on small mollusks, crustaceans, things like that. These guys are going to feed on these plants and so on. They each have a different niche or role. So these are each, of course, herbivores that can feed on the different plants, keeping their populations down. Over here, these ones are going to feed on insects and crustaceans, and so that's going to be their niche or their role. The beaver over here, one of their jobs or its niche is to build dams and provide ecosystems or living spaces for fish that are kind of stuck behind it. And so they create these little avenues where water just builds up. So that would be one of their niches or their roles in the ecosystem. So over here, you can see this bird is not about to get eaten. So its niche, how they kind of work together, is it actually just cleans out in between the teeth, almost like having its own flosser or this alligator. So again, a niche is the role a species plays in the ecosystem, so it's how it fits there. A habitat, these are the different habitats that we have on our planet, at least some of them, I should say. You can see here's a desert. This is more like our area in the northwest. Okay, But a habitat is a physical area where a species lives. So you can see some more here. So here's the habitat of these gophers. Habitat of the beaver, of course, would be here. Polar bears habitat up here. So this, these are just really showing different areas or that physical areas where a species lives. A population. So here's a population of elephants, a population of penguins, a population of giraffes, population of deer. Notice that they're all the same species. Okay, so this is a group of organisms that are all the same species. Community, you can see the difference here. Well, we got a population of zebra, a population of some giraffes, a population, well, I can only see a population of one right here, of elephants, but together, all these different populations would then make a community. So a community is two or more populations of different species, okay? Deer, elephant, zebra, for example. They live in the same inner area, and they're going to interact, of course, with one another because of that. Over here, of course, this would be a community too, because we have the snakes, the fox, the trees, the birds, rabbits. Okay, different populations living in the same area. Biosphere is where living organisms live on Earth. So most of Earth, including parts of the ocean, but not all of it, and the atmosphere only up to a certain level, is going to be able to contain areas where life can live. That's considered the biosphere. 
So as you dig underneath the ground, of course, you're going to run into insects. That would be part of the biosphere. But eventually, you're going to get to a point where you don't run into any life. That's the end of the biosphere. Same thing if you go up into the air. Eventually, you're not going to run across any birds and things like that that are living anymore. That's the end of your biosphere. So you can see here the biosphere is really just this area here because that's where we're going to find life. Below that, no life, not part of the biosphere. So higher levels of organization is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger each time. That's kind of what you saw in the descriptions today. So we start off with an individual, then more than one individual or more than one organism makes a population of fish. Okay, a community would be that fish population plus another type of fish, plus maybe the jellyfish, plus the population of these crabs. Ecosystem would be all those things plus the habitat that they live in. Biome, there's different biomes around the world. We don't actually define that in middle school, but biomes are kind of in between here and the biosphere. So a biome, for example, would be a portion of the Earth instead of the whole Earth. The biosphere was the whole Earth where living things can live. Okay, so that's the basics of what it is that we're covering.